What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to T3G. My name is Dalibor, and today, uh, Thoughtful Thursday, I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to find a way to do it. Today, we're going to talk about the importance of self-awareness. And I want to talk about self-awareness. Self-awareness is massively important. If I could wish anything on anybody besides health, it would be self-awareness. I think the reason that I've had a happy life and some success is because of self-awareness. I've mentioned before that it took me a long time long time to figure out what I wanted out of life, what I wanted to do. Now that I'm there, I'm almost kind of getting into like the granular details of it. I'm thinking more and more about what about storytelling I enjoy. And for me, it very much, like it's becoming, there's a fly and it's upsetting me. I don't know how it got here, a mosquito or something. Hey, I got it. Y'all got that live ninja, ninja action. Um, it's becoming very obvious to me that it's the process. It is entirely the process of storytelling, the the journey in getting the story told, what, whatever it may be. Like I really enjoyed the 100 days of making comics when I did the script for Wolfpack. I really enjoy doing all these shorts that I've been doing. Super fun. I love them. I, I'm coming up with new ones and more all the time. With like the simplest prompt, I'm like, all right, how do I execute this and tell a story with it? And it's it's so so exciting it's very genuinely just it makes me feel good it's and i think that's what everyone's looking for and i know everyone isn't necessarily in the same situation that i am where i work from home you know i work up here i work my 40 hours a week and then i get to walk out of this room and go downstairs and, and do whatever i want because i'm still at home not everyone's in that position not everyone's in that situation and i understand it's difficult when you have more responsibilities when you have children when you have there's a lot of things that are around you that are in the way of you doing what you want but i really think the the things that you're doing that you have to do right i have to I have to do this job that i really really hate to pay the bills it makes me enough money that if i didn't have it it would become very difficult to pay bills so i have to do this job but what i've come to realize for me the hating this job it's become less and less the more i realize and the more i articulate to myself and to others what i want right it's it's become like as I started seeing a therapist and I've just been able to just like talk things out and say them out loud and someone else besides myself and people who are naturally in my corner, right? Hadis is in my corner. My wife is in my corner. Those people are naturally going to back me. So like they're going to, to a point, say things that I want to hear, even though they're very honest. My wife, Hadis, very brutally honest sometimes, you know, it's... It's still different coming from an entirely third party. So when I say certain things and I say, hey, you know, this is why I'm upset at work and this is what makes me upset. They're like, yeah, that does kind of sound crazy. What are you doing to focus on what you want to do? What are you doing to further your goals? And kind of keeping those two things constantly going it gives me a, a, an opportunity to refocus and say, oh yeah, like I'm having to deal with this silly customer who doesn't know what they're doing, doesn't know what they want, doesn't know what they're trying to accomplish. Yeah, but like, I'll be done with that. And then I can write a story, then I can write a sketch, then I can film, then I can edit. It, it's honestly be, become easier to work. It, I didn't think it was gonna be this way. I broke a keyboard. I just bought a brand new keyboard here because I broke the other space bar because I would be typing to someone and they would, while I'm trying to explain something, be like, I don't understand. And then I'd be like, Duh. you just like pound the crap out of the space bar and I broke the space bar. And that's not healthy, right? My, one of my old keyboards, I just like smashed it on the, on the table and all the keys flew off. Like that's how hard I hit it. All the keys flew off the keyboard. So like I had anger issues because of this job. And I think it was very much to do with the fact that I was trying to do something else, but I didn't know what it was. And then when I figured out what it was, I wanted to do that instead of this job. And I think I've gotten to a place where I can do both. I can do this job, not forever, obviously. God knows, not forever. But I'm at a place where I'm not dreading going to work every single day. And I 100% think that's come out of me really in depth figuring out what I want, what I'm trying to accomplish, how I'm gonna go about doing it. Those little things, right? You know, we, we, we set these goals, we set these long-term goals of, hey, I'm gonna do this, one day I'm gonna do this, one day I'm gonna do this. But now it's more so for me, how, like, how am I telling the next story? 
and more than ever, it's become about the journey. And I know it's it's cliche and it's cheesy and whatever, but like the end goal of like the big company that I can you know make things happen for people, that's still the goal, right? That's still where I want to be. That's still the legacy I want to leave. But right now, I can I can do that to a limited degree, obviously. But I can do that to a different audience, and I can do it to a different degree. I'm working on a on a project to help indie comic book creators promote their stuff. It's not going to cost anything. It's like it's just going to be my time, my energy. It's not going to cost anything to the consumer, so it's just going to be free. I'm going to be driving traffic to it. I'm going to be doing everything in my power to get clicks and views and that kind of thing. My point is. I'm I'm doing what I what I want to do in the future just on a smaller scale, right? I can't make just a project happen for someone, right? I can't kickstart someone essentially right off the bat, be like, hey, you want to do this project? Pitch it. That sounds really cool. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna make it happen. I'm gonna fund this project. It's gonna be sponsored by ne Nexus or whatever you know. However we go about doing it, I can't do that right now. But I can do this. It's just effort. It's putting in a little bit of effort to do what I want to do, which is help other people, and I'm, I'm, I get to tell stories. Out of this w magazine that I'm calling in, I'm, I'm gonna do a whole video about this at some point, but this magazine that I'm putting together, uh, I'm gonna take a section, and it's gonna be promoting our stuff, and it's gonna be promoting uh, our content, and I'm gonna be telling stories, whether it's prose, whether I do another comic. My eight-page comic that I did for the 100 Days of Making Comics anthology, definitely going in there in the first issue, like, stuff I have, I can put out. There are ways to tell stories without just, you know, it doesn't have to be sequential art. It doesn't have to be just prose. I've been going through lately for some reason, just a lot, these Millennial Visions books that Marvel did ages ago, literally 2000, 2001, 20 years ago. But out of, out of one of those books came Nocturne, which became a super popular character in, in Marvel, like super popular character to the point that she came out of alternate universes, like joined the main universe and like became a staple of the, of the X-Men books. That was literally, it was a single image and it was a body of text that told the whole story of that universe. And out of that came a character that was explored and enriched and super cool. Just like super cool. Jim Calafiore designed her and created her and it, Dude, when he told me, like, that never clicked in my head. I knew it was, like, his artwork, but I didn't know he wrote that and I didn't know he created it. When he said, oh, yeah, I created her. <sighs> I saw him at a show once and he was like, oh, yeah, I created her. He's like, in Millennial Visions. I'm like, oh, no, I know that's where it came from. But, like, that never, like, the two pieces never connected because he was one of the artists on Exiles, which is where, the, where she was featured primarily. I ran out, searched the con floor until I found copies of the solo story that he did for her in Exiles, and I brought it back for him to sign. Like, I went out. What I'm saying is this character was created in a standalone book without any practical expectation that she was going to be featured somehow they did and it was one of his characters and again premiered with a single image a body of text all that to say i'm going to be taking some of these spaces i'm, I'm i've been really kind of itching to draw more and i don't think it has to be production quality which is what i've discussed before i'm not a production quality artist as far as comic books but in this different format where i can draw a single piece and then tell a story about that piece or about you know, tell a story and visualize it in one way. I think that's an opportunity for me where I will be able to execute some stuff that has just been rattling around for years. So long story long, <laughs> the, the whole purpose of this video is to just kind of remind you to maybe go in a little deeper into the thing you're chasing, right? The thing you want to do, what about it do you want? I really, really enjoy telling stories and the fact that I can do that at any time has just recently kind of hit like really deep to the point that it's relaxed me at work. I don't care as much. I walk away and I'm kind of like, meh, like it's done, I'm done, whatever. I, you know, while I'm at work, I still feel some tension because I'm, again, I don't like the job. And yeah, would it be great if this channel blew up or, you know, if this magazine blew up and we got sponsored or something, I don't know, who knows? It'd be outstanding. And guess what? both feet just jump just jump if i got half as much half as much money 
a year than I do at my job, I'd be shipping their computer right the fuck back to them. <laughs> be like, here's your computer. Uh, I'll give you my last check. Peace the fuck out. But till then, being aware of this, being kind of in tune with the fact that I can just tell stories whenever I want, feels good. It feels good. And I would challenge you to kind of find those little pieces of what you want, what you can do to do that thing you want. And just enjoy those. Enjoy the real process. Because one day you're going to be the musician. One day you're going to be the great photographer. Till then, enjoy taking photos. Enjoy music. Enjoy singing. Enjoy drawing. Enjoy running. You know, if you want to be a track star, you're going to get there step by step. You're not going to jump out first try and run a mile in four minutes. That's why I'm kind of weirdly glad that my thing is rather broad. <laughs> like, I can tell any kind of story. I've got plans on telling some real life stories about myself via video. But at the same time, I have a lot of fictional stuff that I'm doing via video. I have a lot of fictional stuff that I'm going to be doing via comic books and, and, and prose. And one day, doing a piece of fanfic in video. Ellis, I'm not going to tell you guys, but I'm going to be super excited. And I know there's a whole audience of a specific show that is going to be really excited about it. So who knows? Maybe that'll be the video that pops. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be it for this one. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Oh, side note, I've been recording with this Sony microphone. Uh, let me know what you guys think. It was about two and a half feet, three feet away from me. We'll see what happens.